Well, I'd say the uh, the woodshed's getting pretty pretty low. On one side, I've got the season wood. I've only got about a a row and a half left. On the other side is is uh, next season's wood. So I've got a lot of next season's wood, but I just don't have a lot of seasoned wood at the moment. So today we're just going to go cut a cut a tree down, just a dead one, standing dead one that'll burn. It's springtime, so we can we can get away with that. I wouldn't do it at minus 30, but today we're going to do that. But first, I'd say it's uh, it's good to take a look at the chainsaw. I'm really just a hack with the chainsaw, but I'm going to sharpen it. I'll take it out talk about the chainsaw and we'll go from there. Uh, you'll often see videos with um, a chainsaw and a vise and somebody sharpening it with all kinds of different devices. Uh, you really just need a, a couple of files, a flat file and a round file. Um, just make sure you have the right size of a uh, round file for the, the chain and that's identified on, on the packaging of the chain itself and you can probably look it up online but I've got a steel um, MS-362 and I'm uh, just going to sharpen it up before going out and, and cutting a nice easy uh, uh, dead, uh, dead tree. Uh, one thing I've done uh, this spring is to just kind of prepare my kit. Um, I, had a, I had made a plywood box for the back of a snowmobile a few years ago and it was empty and I thought hey this is a perfect spot to, to put my gear. So you see the axe in the background, that's that's a necessity. Uh, spray painting it fluorescent orange or some fluorescent color helps you uh, to find it after it's buried in the snow. Ear protection, my chain oil, pre-mixed fuel, that's a 50 to one for steel. And then my little, my little kit that's got everything in it. So uh, yeah, I'll check that out. I'll open it up and show you what's inside. Okay, so let's take a look here at what I've got. Well, a couple of wedges, important. You see that they get cut off a little bit. Sometimes you nick them with the chainsaw. That's just normal. I identify trees that I might cut later. This is, is the key here. I just discovered this last year and that's the file but I've got the round files here as well spark plug remover spark plug adapter all of this so let's see the other important thing that's in here and <laughs> it's something that you wouldn't consider normally is a permanent marker you gotta mark that initial spot on the chain so that you know where to come back to. Spare plugs. Spare ear plugs. So that gives you an idea of what's in there. It's nothing magical. Just some of the tools that you need. And I'll repeat once again. I'm I'm just a hack, a weekend warrior. I figured out what works well for me, and and uh, I just I just do it. it keeps, my my saw is sharp, and uh, I'm cutting straight, so I, I think that uh, you know it's it's okay. If it's not perfect, I don't care. Okay. Oh, so one of the other things too is gloves it's good to wear gloves when you're doing this the chain is still pretty uh pretty sharp even though it, it's considered dull but you can see where i put the uh the little mark from the magic marker there and this tool is a combination tool it does um both sides so this direction on the chain and this direction on the chain and you see that there's a little arrow there on this side and if you flip it over there's an arrow for the direction so you only go in one direction and there's a flat file and a round file and all of these little guides the guides actually just allow it to sit on top of the chain links 
And what it's going to do is it's going to sharpen the tooth and file down, I think it's called the, the raker. But anyhow, so simple. Um, I just I just hold on to it and I don't put too much pressure. You just put pressure, I go about four or five, five times. And what it's done is it's sharpened this tooth and flattened the raker here. And then you just keep on going. You've got the, the marker uh, line so you know where to stop. Oh, yeah, the, the other nice thing about this tool is it's giving you the right angle right from the start. You could just put it right up against the chain bar and, and go. It's good to do uh, even pressure, the same number of strokes. And uh, the, re the reason for that is that you start sawing crooked. You end up with all of the ends of the of the um, logs with an with angles. They don't stand up. So I'll continue this. I mean, it's, you can see how easy it is. It helps to have the gloves, though. I gotta say. And then I just do the same thing on the other side. But it's a little confusing because you have to get the, you have to flip this tool over. I'll show you. I flip the tool over and then it will um, give you the new direction. There's my line. So that's where I, I started. Now you've got to figure it out, right? You can't just flip the tool over like that until you go here. And then what? I want to be this on this one, but that's not where it goes. So you just have to turn the saw. That's not super obvious, actually. And then you can see there, there's my line. Not sure if I have to readjust this, but I'll just check here. Right, so I did have to readjust it. Oh, better put on my gloves. Now I'm just gonna go in the other direction. So I flipped this tool over. I start on the, on the link that had the little mark. And I, five, and I just keep on going. that that is it so I'm back to my mark right here and we're all good yeah one of the things with chainsaws is that if they're adjusted fairly well you um, when you put gas in 
you generally have to fill up your chain line. And uh, I got to tell you, last week my chain oil was, and I had winter chain oil, so I had the thin chain oil, but it was, it was thicker than molasses. It was just crazy cold. So there we go. Top that up. Just it's easy. It's easy to just spill this over. You just have to be careful. It's nice not to have to use a tool. The old uh, the old chainsaw is required like a screwdriver, a big screwdriver. So there's that one. Then we'll just just do the same thing here. This is the oil. Get a little bit of oil in there. Oh, new bottle. And this is not too bad. It's it's thick, but it's not too bad. This one too. Just stop way before it's like right up at the top. Otherwise, you're just gonna make a mess. Speaking from experience, of course. I've got experience as a hack with a chainsaw. Okay, so uh, we've gotten the chainsaw taken care of with gas, oil, and sharpened it up a little bit. Now it's time to go uh, try it out and go uh, cut myself a, a standing uh, dead pine or spruce to, uh, to burn the rest of the week. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm all geared up and we're just about to take off. I'm going to head down the trail and see if I can find myself a nice, uh, nice tree to cut. Earlier this week, this was under the snow. We had some rain and some heavy winds, and it's fully exposed now. I can't even go over it with my snowmobile. So, we'll get this thing going, get this thing out of the way. shame in starting the chainsaw again. Yeah, I'd say we have a couple more trees to cut. That one's gonna be a pain. And then I just, I just took this one out. It was right across the trail. 
Well, it's a nice bush here. Uh, but uh, we'll go find us a uh, perfect one. Well, I was just uh, about to continue down the trail and I, I looked up and I found a pretty decent tree. Some of the things I look for, that it's dead, it's standing. And if you, ha if you look way up to the top of the tree, are, are there any needles on it at all? Some have a couple, but it's dead enough. But in general, I try to make it fall along the trail makes it easy to load up into my sleigh and uh, we just go from there. So I'm just going to take down a tree here and uh, we'll uh, hopefully it'll go along the trail and not onto my snowmobile.
So I was pretty lucky. I used my wedge and it actually popped the tree right where I wanted it along the trail. Now I'm just going to buck it up and load it up and I'll have some wood for, you know, three or four days. That's it. I'd say that's good. That'll fill my sleigh. The tree's not going to get any deader, so I could come back and pick up the rest at any point. So there's still about four weeks of snow left, I think. So I'll just uh, pack it up and start move on to the next project.